crisis and impact on the housing market, right now on The Leadership Voice. Welcome to The Leadership Voice. I'm your host, Jay Barbuto. Today's episode is about crisis and the impact on the housing market. Joining us today is Stephen Thomas, Chief Economist from Reports on Housing, a company that follows and reports on trends in the real estate market. He brings us 29 years of experience in real estate. So please welcome Stephen Thomas. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Steve, thanks for being on the show, sharing your thoughts around the economy. Maybe we could start with the question everybody has. Tell us about the state of the real estate economy here in Orange County in Southern California. Well, that's a fun and loaded question because the market is way different than what everybody imagines. Because of COVID-19, they think that... Uh, we should be just like the the last great recession that we just had, and 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 uh, they heard that the market really slowed down and that escrows were being canceled. However, within the last six weeks, we've seen demand totally rise. And as a matter of fact, um, uh, in San Bernardino and Riverside, demand is almost identical to uh, year over year levels. And Orange County, LA, San Diego are quickly coming up to the same level. So we actually have a resurgence in demand. And part of that is the adaptation of the real estate uh, industry, where now they have the proper PPE, they are able to show properties. Uh, there's more that they have to do. There has to be signs on the door to make sure that they all of the protocols and, and showing houses. and But there's a series of steps that they had to take. And at first it was like shocked. Everybody was like during the headlights, didn't know how to adjust and they've adjusted. So what's happened actually is the market slowed naturally like it would as soon as we had a lockdown mid-March. And then we uh, uh, also had not many homes coming on the market. So there were very few homes on the market and demand was really low. So there was actually this push and pull from both sides of the equation very low supply and very low demand. So uh, between the two, it was like a showdown, one that favors sellers, one that favors buyers. So it was kind of a stalemate until within the last six weeks, like I said, all of a sudden demand is coming up. And partly that, that, that is to do with low, low interest rates. We have record low interest rates, three, three and quarter, three and a quarter percent. So uh, that has been the jet fuel that has helped us just catapult in this, in this uh, marketplace where we're seeing a lot of uh, pent up demand and, and it's really moving the, the needle. So we actually have, if you are below a million dollars in LA, Orange County, San Diego, it is extremely hot. Like that $750,000 detached house actually uh, is getting multiple offers at this point. So uh, the market is definitely improving and that, that uh, has a lot to do with how healthy the market was prior to COVID-19. So that's where we're at right now. It's just totally different than what people were expecting. So I think a lot of people were of the assumption that things are terrible, that the sky is falling, and that we have a lot of issues and things are maybe not where we, where we want them to be. Um, could you talk about some of the biggest myths that people uh, seem to be believing uh, that they should really uh, rethink? Yeah, the, the first one is, uh, is comparing it to the Great Recession, comparing now to uh, the, the biggest downturn that we last had where so many people got scarred from the uh, housing crisis. But remember that was led by the housing, uh, the housing arena. It was bad loans, dogs got loans, uh, dead people got loans. Uh, there was a lot of fraud that was taking place. Uh, there was cash out refinances uh, and there was so much supply. There was four times the amount of supply that we have today. And you compare that to where we are today and we didn't use our homes as piggy banks. There's been a very, very low supply and uh, the, uh, there's plenty of nested equity. And because of this, we had very, very low supply and very, very low demand. And now that demand is rising, there's this uh, inequality where it's now favoring sellers again. The Great Recession, we had so many homes on the market that, uh, and with such small demand, the demand was what I refer to as inherent demand. Because of that inherent, inherent demand and uh, the mismatch with way too much supply, when you have way too much of something and very little uh, demand, that's a recipe for buyers get a cut in pricing. Now we have very little supply and then we had very little demand, but as that demand creeped up, it was kind of a, just a balance 
there's a balanced market in it. And as we continue to uh, thaw and demand started to increase, we just have seen this market uh, come back to where we were in February. So February is after the Super Bowl. We always, agents are notorious for saying, hey, uh, the market's really good after Super Bowl. And people are thinking, well, they're just saying that because it's the new year, but it's actually true. From Super Bowl, which has nothing to do with football, it just happens to do with timing, all the way up to mid-May, that is where we, we have the best market conditions. We don't have a lot of homes coming into market. And usually that's when buyers are out and want to purchase. So right now we're back to start of February levels, which is right after Super Bowl. And it's like we're starting a brand new spring. So it's contrary to what everybody is thinking. It is not the Great Recession. There's not going to be the flood of, of uh, short sales and foreclosures. And, but this, all of this right now, this is, it's absolutely fantastic. We're gonna see appreciation in the market right now, but it has an asterisk. It all depends upon what happens with COVID-19. And that's my big asterisk because if we had a resurgence and everybody wasn't mindful of it, and then we had, had to stop the economy again, I don't think that, that everybody could weather a second stop in the economy. So, yeah, so maybe we could do it once, but not- Yes. <laughs> so what, should real estate buyers know? Yes. Now, real estate buyers, uh, it's they got to get out of their way of their own stinking thinking. And the reason I say that is because uh, right now they're buying into the fact that, hey, it's a recession, it should slow down. And it's not just buyers that are saying this. It was real estate agents at the very beginning of this. I had agents that were telling me it's going to go down 10, 20%, 30%. And they were telling this to their clients. And I was I was uh, over here saying, wait a minute, no, wait, stop. And it's because of the mis the that there was there's not that big imbalance of supply and demand. You could see it in the numbers, just like I could see it in the numbers for the Great Recession. I saw the thing coming at the at the end of 2005, and it took us all the way to 2007 to, to finally for the the house of cards to come tumbling down. But for now, gosh, you know what? Interest rates are three and a quarter percent. Do the math. It is absolutely amazing how much you save on a monthly basis compared to where we were just in November of 2018 with 5% interest rates. Three and a quarter interest rates are incredible. And it, it's funny how so many buyers, they'll go and purchase a car and they'll nickel and dime to save 15 bucks on, on a car, yet they don't even take into consideration what the difference is in the interest rates. If they get somebody to maybe pay a buy down or if they pay an extra point, what does it do to their interest rate? What does their payment look like? Because they have that payment for so long. And now that they're three and a quarter percent, they're start, some are starting to do the math and saying, hey, wait a minute. These are such great rates. It's almost, uh, it's almost like we're not paying much interest at all. And that really is where it's at, three and a quarter percent. So record low interest rates is, is driving everything. And they really need to be mindful that when they're going to purchase anything below a million dollars, at uh, let's say that $750,000 detached and it's priced right and it looks nice, you better be ready to rock and roll immediately because if it's nice and, and, it's, and it's priced like right, like I said, it will have multiple offers. So these buyers will think, hey, it's supposed to be really slow. And the next thing you know, boom, that, that house is gone in a matter of days. And uh, then they get, the, they get the picture slowly but surely. I'd rather them get the picture right now out of the box when their house comes on the market where they go, I want this market. They better be ready to act. It's like as if they're, they're uh, on, on the, uh, the uh, track and they're in the gate ready to go. That's how they have to be. So a lot of buyers might be thinking that this is the time to steal a house or this is the time to get a great deal, you know, to lowball on your offers, but it's really not going to play out that way at all, is it? No, it's, it's not really that COVID-19 was suppressing demand, but it's, it's, it's losing its grip. But COVID-19 is still suppressing supplies. So we're still seeing not as many homes come on the market. So that's the part of the equation that's getting a little worse. Uh, if you compare to where our inventory is right now in all of Southern California, uh, Orange County uh, is Orange County is probably the most off compared to the five-year average of homes placed on the market. They're just, we're just not placing enough homes on the market yet. So we need more and more homes to be placed on the market so that it, it matches the amount of demand as that ramps up. So demand's actually ramping up quicker than, uh, than the supply. So COVID-19 is still suppressing supply, but it's losing its grip on, on demand. You know, a lot of sellers are probably under the assumption like it's a myth and, and they're being told by um, maybe their agents 
that the market is going to be tough, that it's going to be hard to sell, the prices are going to come down. And so what message do we have for sellers that they need to know if they're thinking about um, divesting? Yeah, they're going to really learn fast. So they underpriced their house or they, they're, uh, they aggressively priced it because they want offers right away. They're going to have multiple, multiple offers. And that's just the nature of where we're at. And I'm talking specifically below 1.25 million in Orange County, below 1.5 million in, in uh, LA. And in San Diego, it's 1.25. And in San Bernardino Riverside, it's $650,000 and, and below. That's where it's the hottest. And the, the lower you get below a, a million or 500,000 in the Inland Empire, the hotter it gets. So uh, they'll learn the hard way if they, if they price it to, uh, to uh, sell really quickly. They're going to have so many offers to sift through that uh, they won't know what to do with themselves if their property shows right and it really is priced right. Because uh, that's the other thing that sellers have a problem with is pricing. They, they uh, tend to come out of the box uh, pricing it, it erratically. And even in a hot sol solid market that we saw at the beginning of this year, you still saw 10% of the market uh, adjusting their price on a weekly basis. And that, that just uh, speaks to the fact that they're not taking advantage of the market right out of the box. So we've talked so mostly about residential kinds of uh, considerations. What about investors? If somebody is looking to do some rental properties or investment properties, uh, is, there, is this a good time for investing in real estate? Yeah, well, money's cheap right now. So, but it, you have to also understand the qualifications are a little bit harder as well. Uh, we've rolled back the clock and it's just natural when we're in the middle of a recession, which I actually don't refer to it as a recession. I refer to it myself as a pandession. And the reason for that is there wasn't one industry that brought our economy down. It was a forced stop to, for health reasons. So we did it to save lives. And in doing so, we, we created a recession. And the numbers look really ugly right now. And then GDP for the second quarter is going to look even uglier. But from there, we're going to be growing. And uh, so we have to be mindful uh, of where we're at. Uh, this is very, very historical. There's not a lot to draw from. So I, I would be very careful in, in, uh, in drawing from anything other than the numbers on a weekly basis where they're going. And that's why I have this report uh, that I put together because right now, closed sales data, if you look at it, uh, uh, it looks ugly in the rear view mirror, but when you're looking out the windshield, man, it looks hot. It looks totally different than where we're at right now. So I, I just, I, I think that we have to be uh, tread carefully and, and uh, just do our research, look at the data, look at the stats and, and make sure that uh, that's telling us the, the the real story of how we should act. Terrific. Well, Stephen, let's take a couple questions from our audience. Danya, do you have any questions from our live audience? Yes, we do. So Frank from Santa Ana asks, do you think that we can expect to purchase homes in more expensive areas at a better price in the next year? Uh, yeah, so I was really, really concerned. You're talking about the upper end. And the uh, luxury, the luxury end of things looked, uh, they, they, it looked dire at first because some part of the, uh, I do an expected market time. If you place your home on the market today, when are you going to open up escrow? And I do that by using the analytics of the supply, active inventory and demand. The last 30 days were the pending sales velocity. Well, things slowed down for all of the market in the upper end. Holy cow, I was seeing numbers where it was like a 1,200 day expected market time. That's forever. So I was, I was uh, but since I saw that, and that was about six weeks ago, where we're at right now is we're seeing the upper ranges actually thaw out quite a bit as well. A lot more improvement than I thought. Just like the demand came up a lot sharper than I thought. The, the uh, real story here that nobody's talking about is we're having a V-shaped recovery in real estate right now. And it's probably the only V-shape that we're going to get because it was one of the strongest pieces of the economic equation prior to COVID-19. So luxury, it, I, I had some doubts until 2021, but um, luxury is starting to prove me wrong. So we're actually seeing the numbers get better a lot faster than I anticipated. And part of that also is equities are coming back. We're back. Equity market is back to where we were in 20, uh, at the uh, end of 2019. So at the end of 2019, and that's where equities are back, holy smokes, where's all this money coming from? So people's 401ks went down to 201ks, went to 301ks, and they're coming right back up. So that is, that is creating a lot of positivity out there. So that helps in, in, uh, in, 
the, the healing of the luxury market. So it's actually coming back online. I do not think that they're going to get that many deals. The only place you can get a deal right now that I can see is I was looking at Los Angeles. It's one of Los Angeles County above 6 million still has a thousand day expected market time. So uh, go for it. <laughs> so that might be your, 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 your sweet spot if you're looking for a good deal. Um, sure. Do we have a second question down here? Yeah. Um, so Rowan from Fullerton asks, um, with many out of work due to COVID-19, what advice can you give those that are having trouble paying their mortgage? Yeah. So there is that forbearance program that is around and understand that uh, forbearance, because most people are, are sitting with a lot of nested equity. There are people that are more vulnerable. And those are the people that did FHA or really low down payments. There wasn't a lot of those programs available, but there were more coming online. So it's not a gigantic number, but if you purchased in 2019, start of 2020 or end of 2018, you're a little bit more vulnerable in this marketplace because you put less down and there are closing costs that are involved and all that stuff. But, um, but if you can find a job or at least buy yourself time, what you can do is you can do the uh, forbearance. Now, forbearance has been redefined. It used to be that balloon payment at the very end of, uh, end of uh, the forbearance period. But uh, government came out and they quickly told everybody, that's not what it is. You're not going to be, there's no balloon payment for anything backed by the government. And most lenders are going to follow suit. So what you're going to have is there's going to be a negotiation at the end. And they can do a six-month forbearance where they're not paying their mortgage for that period of time. And then they can can, they can probably take that that those missed payments and stick them on the end. They stick that on the end of the, the mortgage, and then it, it does not come due until later on. And that's a great way of, of taking care of it. Another way is you can have a payment plan that you can put together. And so you're going to be able to work things out to get you to the other side to where you're employed. There will be some people, there will be some fallout uh, with unemployment, where unemployment some of those numbers won't come back online because we were operating at a 51 year low as far as unemployment. There's only 210,000 unemployed across the United States prior. And now look at where we're at, you know, we're, we're approaching 40 million. So they're not all going to come back online and it's gonna take us another six, seven years for us to get down to that, that 51 year low. But I think that we, we have the ability to get back there, but there will be some people that will be hurt in this. There will be some people that will have to sell. There will be some short sales that will be done probably next year. It won't be any wave of distress or anything like that. And, and as far as my advice to those people that are unemployed, this is the time period where there's gonna be some shifting that's taking place. There, as you can see, boy, as far as electronics and cameras and all the equipment, it's daunting. And uh, But of course, I'm 51, so it would be more daunting for me. There's a definite avenue for those people to learn a trade uh, like this and to go out there and just reinvent themselves, adapt. And that's what we're all doing anyways. Look, we're adapting right now. And, and we've been doing it. I've been doing so many Zoom uh, presentations. I am, I feel like I have a master's degree in Zoom. So, and before this, I also didn't do that many Facebook Lives. Now I have a program every Tuesday and Friday that I do a Facebook Live to talk about the housing market. And now it's just looking a lot different than where I was prior. And it will look that way. We'll all adapt. And that's what we got to do. We got, there's a great uh, book called Who Moved My Cheese? And you know what? You could just sit there and, go look for the, you can go look at the same place for the cheese. Well, the cheese moved. So when the cheese moved, we have to reinvent ourselves and figure out another way to get that cheese. And I think that I take that with me going forward and I had to do it myself. And, and uh, I hope everybody does the same thing. Oh, that's great. I think we have time for maybe one more question. Danya, do we have a third question from our audience? We do. Sissini from Anaheim asks, what advice can you provide to college students that are saving to buy a home? Bravo. <laughs> I think real estate's the way to go. There's so many people that they want to skip that tran transitionary uh, house, that condominium or townhome. And I've noticed that with uh, research that we've done that we're getting there. There's a lot of generation is they're getting married later. So they're kind of skipping that transitionary condo. I'd say the sooner rather than later, take advantage of these low interest rates. And there's great programs where you can get in with FHA 5% down. It's actually less than 5%. And there's not a lot of people that even know that that exists. So you don't have to put a lot down in order to purchase something. And, and now you've got something of value. You're, you're, you're paying somebody's mortgage, even if you're paying rent. You might as well pay your own 
mortgage. And uh, then down the road, you could take that, that condominium or townhome, that stepping stone into that first house that you purchase and take that equity along with you. And uh, it's just a really wise, wise direction to go. So start saving for that 5% down, not as daunting as 20%, which everybody thinks that's what you have to do. So that's what I would do if I was in the shoes of a college student. No, that's great, Stephen. I want to thank you. Um, that's great advice for our young viewers. And I'd like to thank you, Stephen, for joining us on today's show. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, I think that's all the time we have for today's show. Join us each episode of The Leadership Voice. We bring you relevant topics to guide your thinking all around leadership. I'm Jay Barbuto, and on behalf of the Center for Leadership at Cal State Fullerton, we'll see you next time right here on The Leadership Voice. <laughs>